Are we ready? All right, folks, we're back at ringside getting ready for the start of the Mildred Taylor, the Myron Taylor, that is, and Curtis Strong fight. Myron Taylor, the brother of Mildred Taylor. And once again, my name is Sonny Means here at ringside for MNET Super Sports, the leaders in world-class boxing. Good evening of boxing here. We're coming from, coming from Atlantic City, New Jersey, in the Trump Plaza, in the International Ball, the Imperial Ballroom, that is. Beautiful place here. As you see, both fighters are up in the ring right now, Myron Taylor and Curtis Strong. Myron Taylor's record is 26 and 7, 26, 7 and 2 with 13 knockouts. Curtis Strong with a record of 10, 1 and 5. 10, 1 and 1 with 5 knockouts. Curtis Strong, this is his first time leaving the Chicago area. He's making his debut here in the Atlanta City, New Jersey area. He's a hard puncher with both hands. It is, like I said, his record is 10, 1 and 1. He's 26 years old from the Chicago area. He's working out of the same gym out of the Chicago area as the former cruiserweight champion Alfonso Ratliff, who also hails from the Chicago area. This should prove to be an interesting evening of boxing with these two young men. Uh, Myron Taylor, since uh, his disappointing 15-round defeat with Calvin Grove for the IBF championship, Myron Taylor, 28-year-old, well, he was defeated in that, in that fight, and that was back on February the 3rd. And he himself, at five feet, five inches tall, he said he would like to really make his presence known here tonight and really get back to that championship form, the form that, uh, that he, he, arrived, he arose to the occasion to try to fight for that IBF championship. He would love nothing better at this time in his career to get another shot at a title. We are waiting the start of this fight. And earlier, as we in my opening, we added that the, the former great middleweight champion, five-time great middleweight champion, Sugar Ray Robinson, uh, he passed away this past week, and uh, he's six or seven years old for some time now. The past few years, he had been struggling with heart disease, diabetes, and Alzheimer's disease. And right now, we're going to prepare to take it up to the ring announcer, Michael Buffer, to get the start of this fight along the way. We'll talk more about the legendary Sugar Ray Robinson coming up. As you take a look on your screen right now for the tale of the take with these two young men. gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Trump Plaza Hotel and Casino here on the boardwalk in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Tonight, Main Events Promotions presents the Sports Channel America's Pro Boxing Tour. And now, ladies and gentlemen, before we get started, in the world of sports and boxing, there are stars, there are superstars, there are legends, and then there was Sugar Ray Robinson. Ladies and gentlemen, just a few days ago, this man passed away. He truly is one of the great, great fighters of all times. 175 victories, 110 KOs, six times a world champion. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain silent as timekeeper Lindsey Tucker tolls a memorial count of 10 for the late, great Sugar Ray Robinson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this bout is scheduled for 10 rounds in the junior lightweight division. The referee is Randy Newman. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, he's wearing the blue trunks with gold trim and weighs 131 and one half pounds. His professional record, 10 victories, only one defeat in one draw, five KOs from Chicago, Illinois. Introducing Curtis Strong. And his opponent fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the gold trunks with black letters. He weighs even 130 pounds. Out of professional, 26 victories. Against seven defeats and two draws, 13 KOs. He is the current New York State featherweight champion from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Ladies and gentlemen, Mighty Byron Taylor. Two 
to the center of the ring for their final instructions before this contest. Curtis Strong, he won the Illinois State Junior lightweight title from Abraham Martinez back in Chicago on October the 1st, 1988. So you have two guys that have their state championship. There's a bell starting round one. Both guys are fighting the championships for their respective states. Byron Taylor with the gold trucks. Curtis Strong with the blue and gold stripe. Ooh, a good left hook to the head. Strong from Myron Taylor. This should be a fast paced fight. Neither guy right now appears to be looking for that feeling out round in the traditional first round. And I don't see a lot of perspiration on either fellow, so I don't know if they broke sweat while they were in the dressing room preparing to come out for this contest. Or they dried out while standing while we were commemorating legendary Sugar Ray Robinson. But both guys appear to be confident, strong, looking very in very good condition. The 10 round contest. Myron Taylor trying to dig down to the body with this. That's the right to the body. So he's catching it. He's being stopped. Those punches are being stopped by the arms of Curtis Strong. Good defensive tactic. Both guys appear to be dropping heavy bombs. Perhaps they're looking for an early knockout in this contest tonight. A right hand high on the head of Curtis Strong from Mills Myron Taylor. I have to get those names correct. This is the brother of Milton Taylor. Very polished young man. Action speaks for itself. Guys, both guys are throwing out of leather. Not a lot of damage being done, but they are connecting. Not solidly like they would like to. Good defensive move by Myron Taylor. And Strong open up with a left right combination. Continue to stand. 
together. He's throwing the combination, but now he spins around and trying to spin Taylor around. Successfully, he does it. But I believe he's standing in there a little bit too long. I think his corner wants him to get out of there. In his corner, D.D. Armour from Chicago, the Woodlawn Boys Club in Chicago, Illinois. Love nothing better than to see Curtis Strong walk away with a victory here tonight. Good left right combination down to back up to the left. Taylor Taylor bounced back with his own combination to the body of Strong. Strong opened up another left right combination. One punch land to the head, high on the forehead of Taylor from Strong. Another combination as Taylor wobbles off balance. Strong has to do 
here with his corner pole and they said don't stand in there with Taylor and that's exactly what he's doing. He's standing in there, he's throwing his combination but not getting out like they instructed. Now he tries to spin that pole while he's trying to spin. Taylor would have none of that.
We have 10 seconds remaining in the round. Both guys continue to bail away at one another. As you watch both guys go back to the corner, you're looking at Myra Taylor in this corner. Remember, folks, when your plans call for an outdoors cooking equipment, it's Weber for the best in charcoal barbecue grill. Weber, proud sponsor of this year's International Bowl Boxing Tour. We'll be back in just a moment. Mildred Taylor and his brother in the ring, Myron Taylor. <laughs> he, of course, he's wishing his brother well here at ringside. He's trying to be present to exhort his brother to victory. That's encouragement. And your brother's in attendance, or any members of your family's in attendance. And if your family members are not here, and you got the crowd on your side, you still feel pretty decent. Coming up, former lightweight champion, Vinny Paziano in the ring against Jake Carolla of Chicago. Junior Welterweight. That's a scheduled 10 round fight also. Now there's a mouthpiece of one of the fighters, I believe is Curtis Strong's mouthpiece. As he tries to open up with a flurry, he got hit because he nailed Taylor also. Both guys are going to the ring. Strong is getting the worst of it at this point. He's bouncing back with his own shoulder, trying to dig into the body of Taylor as he backs up into the corner of Taylor. Leaning on as the referee steps in and separates both men. He's trying to get the mouthpiece back. It was Myron Taylor's mouthpiece. Now the referee signals him back to action. In the state of New Jersey, the fighter loses mouthpiece. The action will be stopped momentarily when he gets his mouthpiece back in. Strong just sticking with the jab, pawing jab in the face of Taylor. Several jabs in a row. Spins around on Strong and nails him with a right hand. Not a lot of damage done to him. He hits him with another right hand. He goes back with Taylor's back with his throat. Strong tries to open up with a throat. Got tagged on the right upper cut. Taylor got hit with a left hook with his back still on the ropes. As Strong stands out, he's trying to stick with that jab. And he's carrying that jab down almost to his knee. That's dangerous for a right hand with the speed of hands of Myron Taylor. You might want to bring that left hand up to protect against the right coming across that lowered left hand. A lot of guys have been nailed. Like, there's a good right, left, right combination to the head of Strong from Taylor. These guys are keying off. Obviously, they take a good shot, or the opponent can't punch that hard himself. Four punch combination to the head of Strong from Taylor once again. Taylor spins Strong around. He spins him once again. A strong bounce back and forth Taylor to the ropes as he opens up the third. Strong got nailed with the right hand from Taylor. Another thing that the corner was talking about during the break for was that Strong was being hit low by Myron Taylor. We have 10 seconds remaining in the round. There's the bell ending round number four. We'll be back in just a moment. Cable TV. Good crowd here in the 
Trump Plaza in the Imperial Ballroom. We're really getting into it as we await the start of round number six. This is a scheduled 10 round bout. There's the bell as Curtis Strong rushes to the corner of Byron Taylor. Again, Strong's moving around, looking at Taylor, giving him a look, trying to give him angles, trying to open up with a flurry. Taylor's punches were blocked by the arms of Strong. The overhand right, partially blocked by Strong. Two hook, that hooks, one to the body and one to the face of Strong from Taylor. Both of these guys are doable opponents. They're both absorbing a lot of punches and they're taking it very well so a tremendously good condition as the referee steps in and tell the guys to watch their heads also once again the crowd is calling Myron again a lot of those right hand shots now I'm looking at now that Strong taking he's spinning his head with him so they're not landing solidly so that lessens the effect and the, the power of the punch from, from Taylor Spin. Taylor tries to take that slight step back and pop right back with the right hand on Strong. It works sometimes. There's a good right up to the head and a left hook to the head of Taylor from Strong. And Strong opens up with another left hook. He's exhorting himself now. Winning both arms, not dogging. It could be costly. There's a right hand, a lead right hand to the head of Taylor. Another right hand and left to the face of Taylor. As Taylor stands against the book. Strong is wailing away. Now both guys in the center of the ring. Strong continues to wail away at Taylor. Some of those punches are missing. A good right up a cut to the head. Pop the head of Taylor back up. And strong, strong with, back up with a left right combination to the head from Taylor. Taylor wailing away again. Time that overhand right again. A right uppercut that caught Taylor. Caught strong, that is, from Taylor. As Taylor is back and strong against the ropes. Ties with an overhand right. Working in the defense. Strong continues to slip under the front. He got caught with a right hand. He got hit with another overhand right. Trying to talk to the referee. He's telling the ref that he's using his head, but you gotta watch your opponent. You can't be looking at the ref. Because your opponent is gonna continue to punch. And that's what Taylor was doing, and that's what he's supposed to do. We have 10 seconds remaining in round number six. As Taylor continues to wail away, there's the bell ending round six. Taylor continues to wail away at Curtis Strong. And we'll be back in just a moment. That's coming up. Ten round counts as Jake Carolla, Penny Passiano, Jake Carolla from Franklin Park, Illinois, a neighbor of Curtis Strong. They sometimes work out in the same gymnasium in the Chicago area. Jake Carolla feels that he would, he's going to win this fight. He says it doesn't matter if it ends in one or goes to ten, but he feels he'll be the victor when it's over. As we get a look right now at some of the action from round six. The overhand right to the head of Taylor from Strong. As Strong continues to try to wail away at Taylor with his back against the rope. There's the bell starting round seven. As Taylor was rushed again by Strong. But now Strong backs against the rope. Taylor is opening up. He's spinning around with trying to get the overhand right in. He caught him with a hook. I don't know what the corner of Curtis Strong said to him, but he rushed out and tried to catch Taylor. Almost on his stool, coming out of the corner. But I guess Taylor said I won't have any of that because he began to wheel back and force Strong to back down a bit. Interesting fight. Neither guy has knees have been buckled. Neither guy has been down. We continue to see some blood. I believe it's from the mouth of Curtis Strong because there's no cuts on the face of either contestant. 
Here to be some slight puffing around the eyes of Curtis Stewart. As he continues to circle, Taylor missed the left hook. He went low with that left hook. Taylor did. Strong tries to open up with his combination. Again, he gets in and gets out as his corner's been telling him to do throughout the fight. In round six, up to schedule 10 round contest. Taylor digs to the body, comes back to the head of Strong. His throw is back against the rope. Again, the imperial ballroom of Trump Plaza Casino and Hotel in beautiful Atlantic City, New Jersey. Sunny Beans, this is the Impact Super Sport. Leaders of world class boxing. Coming up with Tim Brown, Michael Chapman, Vinny, Vinny, and Jake Marola. That's coming up. Right now, before us, Curtis Strong, Iron Taylor. I got the name right this time. <laughs>
serious and maybe drop this contestant. Once again, they're just, just slightly above us, wailing away with Aaron Taylor. Very strong, periodically he'll open up with a very a bit lethargic at times. And this round, contented to stand there. Ooh, oh, good level to the face from Iron Taylor. A double, triple looking to the body and down to the head. Very strong. Very strong comes back with a double level to the side. Double hook to the body of Taylor partially blocked. Strong. Just a bit, once again. Watch your head, Byron, watch your head. Curry telling Myron Taylor to watch his head. He's trying to get his head in if we have two seconds remaining. As Curtis Strong looks to his corner. He's hit in the face with a left hook. He's giving away the round. There's a bell ending. Round number seven. Round number eight, I should say. I'm getting a little carried away here. These guys, as you get a look right now at Vinny Paziani. We're going to keep it right here, folks. <laughs> Vinny Paziani, the Tasmanian Devil, says he would like another title shot. That fight will be coming up momentarily. We're waiting for the 10th round of this contest with Iron Taylor and Curtis Strong. As we get a look at some of the action from round nine, round eight, that is, round nine coming up.
I'm not afraid of this guy. I'm not afraid. I just can't move. What do you mean you can't move? Okay, baby. Let's go now. I'm going to turn the ring at you. I'm going to turn the ring at you. I'm going to turn the ring at you. Why don't you go on the ride and fire that hook? You know what I'm talking about? Put your body over here and drive it and drive it through. Get another knee. I know, I know. You're going to do it. You hit him with them double hooks. You hit him with one, you hit him with two and three. Get on your jam. Get on your jam. Shot step, ball. Shot step. Ralph, clean up this puddle, huh? Yeah. Put that one your eyes on it. Put your eyes on it. Ladies, as you just heard in the corner of Myron Taylor, the Sandy Hornies eye again. You want your eyes on him. This is the 10th and final round coming up. Curtis Strong, Myron Taylor. There's the bell starting the 10th and final round. This is Mnet Supersport. Right away, they touch gloves and Strong stuck a jab in the face of Taylor. Didn't give him a chance to get his guard up good. But in the last few rounds, he's been jumping off and starting off, but finishing a bit lethargic. Folks, uh, as Mildred Taylor began to, Myron Taylor, that is, now Strong trying to throw that flurry, but he missed with every punch. I'd like to remind you that Weber, the charcoal barbecue grill leaders, are the proud sponsors of this international pro boxing tour. The Mnet Super Sports, high signings here at ringside. In the beautiful Trump Plaza Casino and Hotel, we're in the Imperial Ballroom. The crowd is really into this fight. This is the fifth and final round. My official card, I have Aaron Taylor ahead in this contest. As Curtis Strong continues to try to circle around and dance around, not throwing any punches. Now he's tired. All right, watch your heads. Let him go. Let him go, Kenny. Watch their heads and let him, to let, him to let him go. As you can hear. This is the first time that Curtis Strong has fought out of the Chicago area. He's made a relatively decent showing for himself, but in order to win on the road, you've got to do more than be, have a decent showing. You've got to come in with a lot of heart. You've got to really want to win. You've got to exalt yourself. He has done that at times, and at times he's been a bit lethargic. Taylor begins to open up the double left hook to the body and power to snare to the head. Curtis Strong continues to take away lightly with a jab here and there. Curtis Strong, Myron Taylor, 10th and final round, Atlantic City, New Jersey. 10 seconds remaining in the round. Kenny Paziano. Jake Carolla coming up next. Our schedule ten rounds. There's the bell ending this contest, folks. And this has been interesting. We'll keep it right here and wait the final decision. Curtis Strong, Myron Taylor. And like I said before, unofficially, I have Myron Taylor ahead in this contest. Curtis Strong, while he represented himself well, I just don't think he did enough to really convinced the, the officials here that he really wanted to win this contest. He made a good showing for his first time out of the Chicago area as we get a look at some of the action from the last round, the 10th and final round. Taylor opening up with a flurry, not doing a lot of damage with that flurry, but connecting here and there with those punches. Perhaps the cut on the inside of the mouth of Curtis Strong presented a problem for him, along with the speed of Myron Taylor, the speed of hands, the movement, both guys not landing the solid shot that they wanted to that would really get a guy out of there, but just landing enough to, to be in this contest. Both guys, you have to say, very courageous in tremendously good condition because it was full speed ahead for the full 10 rounds. 
with the exception of, as I said, some lethar lethargicness of Curtis Strong not opening up, not doing some of the things he said to his corner also that he couldn't move. His corner was telling him to move around, get out of there. He said he couldn't get out of there. He couldn't move as well as he wanted to move. So perhaps we'll find out what the situation really was with Curtis Strong and uh, the lack of movement, the way his corner wanted him to move. As we get a shot right there at what's happening in the ring, as we wait the decision, Michael Buffer's in the center of the ring, waiting the final word for the decision. And once again, I'm Sonny Means at ringside, MNET Super Sports, the leaders in world-class boxing. Well, when Curtis Strong get a look at this tape, uh, he won't be too dissatisfied with himself with the performance for the most part for the first time out. Some of the guys from the Chicago area have ventured here to Atlantic City and didn't fare as well. They've, some of them were stopped early in the fight. But Curtis Strong was able to remain in there for the full 10 rounds, although he could have done more. He could have been busier. He could have listened to his corner and circled uh, the way his corner wanted him to. And I'm sure those, those are the things that his corner will go over with him when they take a look at the tape once they get back to Chicago. But he has to be satisfied with the fact that he's able to walk out of this ring. He was not dropped. He was not staggered. Neither guy was really hurt in this contest. Both guys took a lot of punches. They gave a lot of punches. And there was a little dirty play late in the fight. The referee had to warn the guys. Got a bit out of hand. Hit butts. Low blows. But all in all, a decently fought contest with the exception of those few moments when things got a little haywire. Curtis Strong was content to hold on sometimes during the contest as well. And we'll remind you once again, when your, when your plans call for outdoor cooking equipment, remember Weber, the leaders in charcoal barbecue grills, the charcoal type. As we get a look here at some of the scoring, from this contest. Okay, we're taking it to Michael Buffett for the final the decision of this contest. The official score. Frank Durant and John Conway both scored out in 99 to 91. Miles Savage has it 100 to 91 for the winner by unanimous decision. Matty Taylor. All right, Ivan Taylor, no question about it. Unanimous decision. Just as I indicated that Myron Taylor was ahead on my card unofficially. And we'll see if we can't get him here at ringside to talk with Myron Taylor, the victor here in this contest. Let's have a round of applause for Curtis Strong. From but you have to say Curtis Strong was a gallant opponent for Myron Taylor. He got in here. He came in. He did make a good showing for himself. So you can't take too much away from Myron Taylor. I'm sorry, from Curtis Strong. But he was in tonight against a better opponent and perhaps... Uh, although he didn't appear to tire in the contest, he did begin to wind down somewhat. And when we come back, we'll be talking with the victorious winner, Myron Taylor. We'll be back in just a moment. Okay, Myron Taylor with a harder 10-round decision win tonight. Back to Bob. Uh, 